Keir Starmer is presiding over a coup. And what comes after a coup? Dictatorship. Starmer is the most dishonest mainstream politician of my lifetime. I've not come across anyone who can so barefaced tell lies so regularly. He lied his way to the Labour leadership. He lied his way through the Labour leadership. And when he becomes Prime Minister, he'll lie his way through his Prime Ministership as well. If Corbyn was doing what he did, you'd have every single one of his lies on the front page leading the BBC News. But they want to protect Starmer because Starmer serves their interests. We all know that Boris Johnson is an unscrupulous liar and the damage that that can do for politics and democracy. But you're probably about to elect someone who is just as bad. He had 10 pledges that he got elected on, which he's reneged on every single one. And he's gonna do the same thing in the campaign to get elected. He's gonna give you a whole load of policies that he's not gonna do in power. And we need some scrutiny of this because he's the likely next prime minister. So we need scrutiny of him now. We don't need it later. We don't need to brush it under the carpet because we wanna get Labour in and the Tories out. Because unless he's held to account, he'll carry on taking everyone for a ride. Aren't you concerned about rule of law, justice and fairness? Look at what they have done to Jeremy Corbyn. This is a man who has represented his constituency for nearly 40 years and they've tried to destroy him in the most obscene way. Those kind of people, those kind of bullies, those kind of sadists and those kind of immoral people should be nowhere near power. Corbyn was accused of being a Stalinist and purging his opponents. The real Stalinist is Keir Starmer. He's purged the former leader that he took over, that he supported and tried to make Prime Minister. He's purged him from the party and said he can't stand even as a Labour MP. He's sacked shadow ministers for attending picket lines. He's sacked shadow ministers for tweeting links to interviews in The Independent. He's disproportionately purged Jewish members, the establishment media, don't cover this because the targets of Starmer so far have been the left. But people with his mentality don't stop there. That mentality carries on to everyone eventually if they oppose him. This is an authoritarian leader who does not tolerate dissent. And that does not only go for members who don't support his leadership, that goes for free speech on the major issues of our day. No normal political party would do that. I don't even think the Tories would do that. What Starmer mounted in the Labour Party from 2020 onwards is a coup. And what Starmer is overseeing in Labour is a dictatorship. When you look at Keir Starmer's record, you understand that he's deeply embedded in the power networks within Britain, but also within America. He was a member of the Trilateral Commission, a group which was set up by the billionaire banker David Rockefeller in 1973. It was based on the idea that Europe, America and Japan needed to get together to strategize about how to continue the hegemony of the West. The membership has included people from Henry Kissinger to top industrialists, all the sort of elite 1% and it has produced a lot of US presidents and other politicians around the world. The Trilateral Commission is part of a wider resume that Starmer has which shows that he is willing at all times to do the establishment's dirty work. His time at the CPS from 2008 to 2013 is quite shocking when you look into it. One facet of that is the Julian Assange case which was highly irregular what the CPS was up to. They were working with the Swedes to try and get Julian Assange extradited to Sweden. Perhaps more alarmingly the CPS destroyed huge amounts of emails discussing the Assange case. That period covers mostly when Starmer was head of the CPS so there's a cover-up Going on clearly. His record at the CPS goes on. He refused to prosecute the police who killed Ian Tomlinson and John Charles de Menezes. He wanted to crack down on benefits claimants. He wanted high sentences for people who stole bottles of water during the riots of 2011. At all points in his recent career, he is concerned with power, getting it, maintaining it, and destroying anyone who is a threat to that power, which for me is a very, very worrying thing because he will likely be the next Prime Minister of Britain. And when you have an amoral individual, who is willing to do anything to gain and maintain power. It is quite a scary situation. Starmer is a massive threat to any kind of functioning democracy. Corbyn symbolised a huge outbreak of democracy in Britain. Soon after 2015, when he was elected, Labour became the largest political party in Western Europe with 600,000 members. That terrifies the establishment because they hate nothing more than democracy. And Starmer's role is to put that democracy back in a box. He's gone to war with the members, membership has gone right down, and he's welcomed in oligarchs with big money. Starmer's also gone to war with working people. Has a Labour leader ever sacked 
one of their shadow ministers or ministers for attending a picket line for workers fighting for better wages and better conditions. I don't think so. But that is the sorry state of the Labour Party now. It's not a Labour Party, it's a misnomer. It's a Tory party with a red rosette. The Labour Party now is a truly Orwellian party. You have a former leader who was one of the most prominent opposers of a criminal war in 2003 against Iraq, which destroyed a country of 30 million people. He's not allowed to stand in the constituency he's represented for nearly 40 years. Whereas Tony Blair is welcome in the party, not only welcome, but promoted and close to its current leader, Keir Starmer. We do need to get the Tories out, but we need a bigger imagination. We can't live the rest of our lives voting for the lesser of two evils and in fact in the case of Starmer I don't know how much of a lesser evil he is than Sunak. We need to have a program which is long term and seeks to transform the political system away from the situation it is now which is an oligarchy into a genuine democracy. What we have now is a pantomime. We need the real thing. Jeremy Corbyn is one of the most cancelled figures in Britain. Where are all the free speech warriors to support Corbyn? I don't see them. A lot of cancel culture rhetoric is a distraction which is actually conducive to the establishment. When it comes to Jeremy Corbyn and the attacks on him and the cancellation of Corbyn, these people are silent because Corbyn is a genuine threat to the establishment. They didn't go after him because of who he is. They went after him because they want to get to you because he represented your interests and the British public's interests. This is not a war on Jeremy Corbyn. He's a proxy. The war's on you. The war's on your ability to see a doctor when you need one. It's on your kid's ability to go to a well-funded school. It's on your ability to have a government which promotes peace and justice in the world, not war. It's on your ability to have a government which does not sell arms to an extremist dictatorship in Saudi Arabia or an apartheid regime in Tel Aviv. The public should care about what's been done to Jeremy Corbyn because it goes to the heart of the system that we live in. If they can destroy someone who is genuinely representing the people's interests, it doesn't leave us with anything that looks like democracy. It leaves us with what's called a low intensity democracy or a managed democracy, where every four or five years we come out and vote for a faction of the same pro-business, pro-war party. And anytime someone comes along, you might disrupt that cosy, bipartisan, pro-war, pro-corporate political system, they destroy them. The truth about why the British establishment had to destroy Jeremy Corbyn is a sick, rapacious system could not tolerate a decent human being promoting peace and justice near its apex. It needed to destroy him in 2019, but it needs to destroy him now because Corbyn has power outside of Parliament. He has a massive constituency in the British public, and what they want to do now is destroy any example that he may leave for the next generation who want to bring about transformative change in Britain. They need to lock that idea off completely, and we can't let them. I think Starmer will win the next election in 2024, but things will get very interesting soon after. Britain is in a desperate situation. People are suffering hugely with inflation, the cost of living crisis. Young people are crying out for answers to the big questions that they've got about housing, about university, about work, and they're not getting any answers in the mainstream. And by excluding Jeremy Corbyn from the political process in Britain, you're excluding the one person who offered some tangible answers to the big questions that young people have. Keir Starmer knows he has no answers. He knows knows that he has to destroy his opposition because they are giving the answers that people really need to the problems we face. Those answers aren't going away. They're still out there with trade union movements, with extra parliamentary movements, and they can be channeled into new vehicles which can make progressive and transformative change in Britain. I don't think this is the end for Jeremy Corbyn because what he sparked is still there. People saw hope and they saw the possibility of transformative change for the first time in many of our lives. That kind of sense does not die away quickly. It's a Pandora's box and that's why the establishment is trying so hard to destroy him because they want to put the outbreak of democracy, the outbreak of hope back in a box. When Starmer is likely elected in 2024, the realisation that he's barely distinguishable from the Tories will make Jeremy Corbyn one of the most relevant political figures in the country again. Nothing scares the establishment more than losing control of the narrative. And in Britain, they are losing control of the narrative because of the burgeoning independent media sector. So we need to grow it as much as we can and support those doing independent media and doing independent journalism. Support Double Down News on Patreon and go to theclassifieduk.org to find out what your country is really doing in the world.